Thanks for watching this free video tutorial, which is a free sample from our course Comprehensive Introduction to Arnold 5 for Maya. It is a massive 9 hour long course in which we explore all the aspects of Arnold for Maya thoroughly. Make sure to visit our website mographplus.com and check the entire course out. In this lesson, we'll take a look at the shadow matte shader. Now before going through with that, let me quickly walk you through the scene. As you can see, I have this plane geometry that's going to work as a ground plane. And we have this car model, this sedan here, but I won't be able to actually provide this particular car model as I don't have the right to redistribute it. So instead, what you're going to get is the simple car and you can follow the lesson with this particular model here. It doesn't matter what model we use here. The concept is what important. Let me just hide this simple car model here. Shadow Matte Shader is a very useful shader to integrate your 3D geometries onto HDR environments or photographic backplates. So you basically apply this shader to the floor plane here to basically catch shadows from lighting within the scene. Now let me show you the workflow and how you do it. Okay, first of all, obviously we need an HDR image to provide the lighting. So from the Arnold lights and add a Skydome light. Let's, instead of color, use a file node and load this HDR image here. And you can actually go to hdrmaps.com for these HDRIs. They have tons of free HDRIs that can be very useful. We're gonna be using this HDRI and this photographic backplate from the same HDRI, okay? So for now, let's load this HDRI here. Open it up. Perfect, now the HDRI is actually in the scene. Now if I select the AI Skydome light, can actually run the Arnold render view. Okay, so that's our lighting with our Arnold Skydome light. Obviously we don't want to see this HDR image in the background, we just want to see its effect on the lighting. So what we can do is come down to the visibility section and zero out its camera contribution. Now the HDR is actually affecting the scene but we don't see it in the background, which is great. Now the next step would be to actually define the image plane, the photographic backplate that we want to see it in the render. So what you can do is to select your camera and if you come down to the environment section, here you can actually create an image plane. So let's create one and define the image that we want to be used as our photographic backplate. In this case, this is the map that we want to use. Let me just come down here and under its placement settings, increase the depths so we can actually see all of our geometries. Probably something like 1200. Now what we wanna do is to actually, let me just select the Skydome light and if I come down to its hardware texture, we can actually zero out its opacity so we can actually see our backplate. And if I hide this uh, plane geometry here, you can see we have our image plane defined. The next step would be to make sure that our image plane and our HDR image are gonna line up perfectly. So what we need to do is to simply select our Skydome light. So this is our photographic backplate here, right? So we need to make sure the HDR is matching this exactly. So what I'm gonna do is to select my Skydome light. Let's increase its opacity for now. And we can select the camera if I come up it to its alpha gain and zero it out, now we can actually see our HDR map exactly. I'm gonna select my Arnold Sky and start rotating it until we get what we want. As you can see, something like this is very close to the uh, image plane that we have defined. So now that we have this perfectly set up, we can zero out the opacity and go to our camera and increase the alpha gain to one again. Now we can actually unhide our plane geometry as well. Okay, now if I actually render the scene, make sure to actually update the scene to see the image plane here. Okay, so that's what we get right now. The image plane is defined, obviously it needs some adjustments. So let's select the camera and under the placement section, let's fit it to the resolution gate. And one thing you can do obviously when you wanna use a photographic backplate is to go to your render setting and make sure your aspect ratio, your width and height is the same as the image. So the image plane that we have is a 
1500 pixel by 1000 pixel so that's the resolution that i have defined for my width and height in my render settings okay now as you can see it's going all right obviously the image is a bit overexposed so let me just select the sky dome light for a moment here and set the intensity to probably something like let's try seven probably 0 0.65 instead of 0 0.7 okay that's enough now it's time that we go ahead and actually assign the shadow match shader to our plane geometry so let's select the plane geometry right click assign a new material come down to the arnold shaders and here you have the ai shadow mat so let's select that and without doing anything if i actually come down here a bit and run this you can see our image has been perfectly integrated onto our photographic backplate now let's take a look at some of the settings that we have first of all we have this background type which basically sets the value according to the background that you have to see the ground plane reflected properly in the indirect passes like uh, specular for example and you have uh, two options scene background or background color uh, obviously if you have an image plane defined you use the scene background or if you go to the background color you can assign a texture or use a color uh, and in case you assign a texture you can obviously project it through your camera and uh, get a very similar result in this case we just go to the scene background and uh, in the shadow section you can obviously control the uh, color of the shadow here and use any color that you want and uh, you can use it to basically tint the color of the shadows to match a photographic backplate that you have in the scene and we have the shadow opacity how visible the shadow should be in the scene and if we come down to the diffuse section we can obviously enable the indirect diffuse so if i enable the indirect diffuse you can see without the indirect diffuse you don't see that the uh, object that you have your subject is not basically affecting the indirect diffuse contribution but if you actually just to see the effect increase the intensity to let's say something like 10 and enable indirect diffuse now you can see by enabling indirect diffuse and increasing the intensity to a high value like 10 to see the effect a bit better we can clearly see how the object is affecting the indirect diffuse path and we get this obviously effect around the car this white indirect diffuse effect of the car on the floor plane in this case let's disable it in the specular you can obviously enable indirect specular and now as you can see if we increase the ior to something like three we can actually see the reflection of our object on the uh, floor on the shadow mat you can obviously control the density change the specular color to any color that we want and uh, roughness obviously can be simply controlled so it can be a very useful option okay in this case let me disable it and down here in the aov section you can see you have some specific aovs to the shadow match shader you have this shadow shadow difference and shadow mask and if i go to my uh, render settings and under aovs if you come down here you can find a specific aov so if i just add them and actually run the ipr just to actually see less noise we can select the sky dome light and uh, let's increase its sample to something like four now if you take a look at the aovs we have this shadow aov which is a direct light shadow aov we have this shadow difference which is a difference AOV which can be used to eliminate the shadow from the direct component in the compositing and we have this shadow mask and this one can be used in composition to localize and tweak the shadows okay folks so here is our final render and we just increase the uh, camera samples and diffuse and specular samples now to actually increase the realism of this render what you can do as you can see take a look at this road sign here we have this uh, sharp shadows so you can for example add a directional light and try to actually match the shadow color and the direction of the shadows that you see in the scene and obviously that's going to increase the realism of your render a lot 
So in this lesson, we learn about the shadow match shader in Arnold for Maya and how to integrate your object into HDR environments and photographic backplates. See you in the next lesson. Thanks for watching this free video tutorial, which is a free sample from our course Comprehensive Introduction to Arnold 5 for Maya. It is a massive 9 hour long course in which we explore all the aspects of Arnold for Maya thoroughly. Make sure to visit our website mographplus.com and check the entire course out.